Greetings, I'm Dr. Cindy Jeb, president of Ramapo College in New Jersey. For 27 years, Ramapo College has worked with the Russell Berry Foundation to present the Russ Berry Making a Difference Award to recognize New Jersey change makers who make our state a better place. We are pleased to introduce the foundation's 2023 honorees and their powerful stories, which reflect how they are making a difference for individuals and communities around our state. On behalf of Ramapo College in New Jersey, congratulations to the honorees and thank you to the Russell Berry Foundation. Hi everyone, this is Steve Adubato. For 27 years, I've been honored, uh, privileged to be a part of this extraordinary event. Uh, this is the 27th anniversary of the Making a Difference Awards. Russ started, Russ Berry started these awards back in 1997. Think about that. Think about all the people that have been recognized and all the people who've been honored. Sometimes the numbers don't do justice to it, but I'm gonna try to remind folks of a few things. First, 4,000, Amazing New Jerseyans have been nominated over these 27 years. 419 individuals have been honored. Every corner of the state, I'll try this from Cape May to High Point. I think that's right in terms of north to south. Um, and how about a couple other things? How about cash awards? $4 million, $4 million in cash awards to our honorees over those 27 years. So the honorees that we recognize, there are 11 that we're going to recognize in this video. These are people who saw a problem, saw an injustice. Some people complain about that. Some people say, I wish somebody would step up. These 11 honorees did the opposite. They stepped up. They leaned in. They said, I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to make a change. I'm going to not be a bystander. I'm going to make a difference, which is why one of the reasons why Russ started these awards 27 years ago, as I said, in 1997. So to kick off the program, I want to introduce us to Scott Berry, Vice President of the Board of Trustees of the Russell Berry Foundation. Now, Scott, as Russ's son, knew better than most why Russ started these awards, why he cared so much about honoring those who don't look for attention, who don't look for adulation, but who just want to make a difference. Check it out. Our community heroes are like seeds that once planted grow into a lush forest of positive change, providing shelter and nourishment for those in need. It's a tremendous honor to be here today to celebrate the remarkable achievements of our unsung heroes, those who have taken the lead in addressing pressing issues and uplifting their communities. My father, Russell Berry, inspired by these extraordinary efforts, established the Making a Difference Awards in 1997 to recognize and honor these change makers across his beloved state of New Jersey. Over the years, we've been truly blessed to celebrate more than 400 incredible individuals representing every county in New Jersey. Their selflessness, resourcefulness, and the diversity of their backgrounds and endeavors have improved the lives of countless people in need throughout the state. My father passionately believed that one person's actions to better the lives of others could inspire people to take similar action and I share this belief. My stepmother, Angelica Berry, the president of the Russell Berry Foundation, refers to our Making a Difference awardees as a force field of goodness all around New Jersey. Collectively, they have created a network of positive change that goes far beyond their individual accomplishments, much like a thriving forest originating from a handful of seedlings. This year's honorees have made a significant impact in their communities through their remarkable accomplishments demonstrating the power of resilience, dedication, and passion for positive change. One individual courageously transformed a terrifying personal experience with gun violence into a mission to reduce such incidents by founding a coalition that supports affected families and works with young people to create safer communities. Another honoree, a Navy veteran and teacher, has taken on the challenge of combating food insecurity by establishing a foundation that not only rescues and redistributes food to those in need, but also raises awareness about the issue. Finally, an inspiring retiree took it upon themselves to create an organization that promotes environmental sustainability in North Jersey communities, 
providing that age is just a number when it comes to making a difference. Together, these honorees show us that it's never too late to take action and create a lasting impact on the world around us. As the great Mahatma Gandhi once said, the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in the service of others. The hundreds of nominations we received this year, each representing a leader making a tremendous impact in their community, truly embody this spirit of service. No action is too small when it comes to giving back, and that is the power of the Russ Berry Making a Difference Awards, the ability to inspire change and transform New Jersey for the better. This is why I continue to be excited about this program year after year after year. In these challenging times, the power of the individual to create meaningful change cannot be understated. I want to extend my heartfelt congratulations to all of this year's exceptional honorees. May this recognition not only amplify their remarkable efforts, but also inspire others to follow in their footsteps and continue to transform lives throughout New Jersey. Thank you all for your dedication, your passion, and your unwavering commitment to making a difference. Your resilience and determination serve as a beacon of hope and a testament to the power of the individual to bring about change. I want to thank Scott for those inspiring and important words. Now we meet the first group of honorees. These are honorees who have dealt with the most basic human needs. Let's talk about what we mean. We're talking about the need for food, health care, and imagine this, a clean and flourishing environment. That's who these first honorees are. These are people who stepped in to make a difference, to provide greater access to resources, resources that some of us can often take for granted. Let's take a look at our first group of honorees. Norma Bow of Highland Park. Over 13 years ago, Norma, a college professor, started Be The Change, a volunteer community service and activist group to address social justice issues in New Jersey. She's led teams of volunteers to deliver food and support to homeless individuals in Newark every week for 12 years. During the pandemic, she created an emergency pandemic food pantry that delivered over 46,000 food boxes to vulnerable people in seven counties. She established a mobile vaccine clinic to reach marginalized, vaccine-hesitant communities and began an outreach to elderly individuals living in homeless tent encampments in Ocean County. So Be The Change started really um, as a student uh, initiative. So I teach a class on death that has a three-year wait list. And I have learned that service work is grief work. And when you can do something in honor of someone, or if you're deeply grieving or deeply troubled or worried about the world, when you go out and do something in the community and you get to meet other people and you make a difference, it's astounding how healing and, and what kind of bomb that is um, for all kinds of uh, trouble. This is what we say in Be The Change. You're not who you say you are. You are what you do. And I find that our group they want to go out and do stuff. And if we can bring it to fruition, we absolutely do. This is a great honor um, to be part of a, a selection of incredible people. You know, none of us do this work for the recognition, um, but it just really is touching and it feels really good um, to be honored in this way. Jose German Gomez of Montclair. After retiring from his accounting and finance career, Jose turned his energies to educating and supporting local environmental and sustainability initiatives. He launched the Northeast Earth Coalition to encourage local sustainability in North Jersey communities, holding workshops and training more than 750 volunteers who manage projects and community gardens across North Jersey. I did my first environmental restoration project for my Eagle Scout, uh, and that was the beginning, the very beginning uh, of the environmental movement that was in the early 70s. In 2016, I founded the Northeast Earth Coalition. The organization has been growing and impacting the life of many people, not only in Montclair, but now we have a representation in 11 towns in New Jersey. We have a different approach probably to most environmental organizations. 
we are now creating theory and wondering what we can do. We are implementing projects. For us, the time to do things is now and we are moving every year forward in that direction, creating new projects. Rather than going to rally and sending letters to elected officials, we are bringing them and said, we are doing this in your community, you need to support this. And the outcome is 11 towns have you know, projects that were originated by the Northeast Earth Coalition. I feel extremely honored to receive the Rosemary Make a Difference Award. I never thought I was able to get that level of recognition. Uh, the things that we do, usually we are not expecting anything uh, in exchange. But, you know, this is a recognition not only to my work, but to the people who are working with me to make everything that we do possible every day. Claudia Wheeler of East Brunswick. A U.S. Navy veteran and elementary school teacher, Claudia launched the SALT Foundation to provide food and supplies to those in need. This volunteer effort rescues four tons of food weekly and distributes to food pantries, shelters, organizations, and churches. It started out in my church and I was just helping out. The church itself had a partnership with uh, a particular Trader Joe's. And my husband said to me, you know, you should really get some help. And the best way to do that is to start your own foundation. We rescue food from supermarkets and retailers that give um, not only food, but other items as well, and give it out to those in need. My goal is to not only uh, feed those in need and those who can use it or, and, and serve others as well, but eliminate food waste. And there is a ton of food that goes to waste and it's perfectly good food. Um, if you see the items that I do um, receive and distribute, um, it will, it would probably blow a lot of people's minds. Salt is not supposed to work alone. It's supposed to actually work with other um, seasonings in the pot, meaning every part of community, community fridges, community people, community groups come to me and or ask me if I can help. I'm hoping that with this um, honor that more awareness could be could come to bring everyone else together. Farms, supermarkets, so that they do not continue to waste and we would be able to uh, do a better thing in our world and the community community first and then in the world. Again, we honor and recognize that particular group of honorees and we, we shift gears in a very dramatic way. The next people you're gonna meet, the next honorees have faced tragedy, pain, suffering that none of us would ever want to face. But often isn't it isn't really simply a question of what happens to you, even if it's a terrible thing, even if it's a tragedy. The question is, what do you do about it? How do you respond? These Rustbury Making a Difference honorees responded by deciding that they would go all in, lean all in in their communities, make a difference in their communities, help others in their communities, try to avoid some of the same tragedies that they faced and so many others. Here they are. Christian Kane of Tom's River. On July 12, 2012, a car accident left Christian's son Gavin, who was 19 months old at the time, with traumatic brain injuries and unable to walk or speak. As Gavin got older, the Kane struggled to access recreational spaces with their son. Christian spearheaded a campaign to build a comprehensive recreational facility where children of all abilities and their caretakers would feel at home. Christian led a multi-year campaign to raise funds and build what is now known as the RWJ Barnabas Health Field of Dreams in Tom's River, which opened in 2022. It was really his will uh, that Mary and I, you know, fed off of, and uh, we wanted to build, you know, a special needs complex where families uh, have a place to go and they didn't have to be stared at and they didn't have to worry about the lack of assess accessibility. And we have over 1,700 registered special needs families who utilize this complex. When Mary and I came up with this crazy idea of, of building this complex, you look at Gav and how are you gonna say, well, I'm gonna quit. 
when he wants this so badly. So, um, you know, we made it happen. Um, it, it took five full years um, to, to build this thing, but there is nothing like this in the country. There is no complex that helps those of any age, of any ability, but also run programs and memberships and activities and events for zero dollars. There's nothing like it. Our mission is to have this kid have the greatest life of all, but then along the way, all his friends and all the new people that we meet, regardless if they're 12 years old or if they're you know, 74 years old, is that this award just means keep pushing, keep fighting, you know, you'll get through it, you'll, you'll figure it out. Carol DeVore of Flemington. A domestic violence survivor, Carol created the Safe Harbor Child Access Center, a trauma-informed, inclusive, child-friendly, and supportive space to host supervised visitations and social engagement opportunities for families experiencing separation and divorce in Hunterdon, Warren, and Somerset counties. We have evolved from a very small grassroots organization into something that encompasses almost every possibility of advocacy that you can think of in the community. We are a small community, so it does mean a lot for people to have one place that they can go to for assistance or have fun, whatever it is. I'm a survivor after being a victim of domestic violence. And again, small town, we all knew each other, so it was kind of awkward for me to go get help or anything. I did reach out to a few people, and that was like 30 years ago, and realizing, wait, we gotta do more for women that have experienced what I have. So I became a volunteer at our local domestic violence agency, and I would go out when the police would get a call about a somebody in a domestic violence incident. And I realized at that time, even though I'm there with them, you are in a moment of probably the worst crisis you could ever imagine. So the more I saw that, I felt what's happening with our children that are involved in all these situations. It was nothing about the children. Either they stayed with the parent who was going for a restraining order or the other parent was making a lot of demands and they would get some kind of um, visitation. I called them and they offered me to open up a center in Huntington County, uh, which I did. We weren't lugging in the holes. We were just doing, it's like putting a Band-Aid on a gaping wound. So I notified the state, they gave me the okay, and the Harbor Child Access Centers really, really started with all the other programs in 2017 when I got our own building and developed all these other programs. So I think getting this and hearing this just said, wow, I wanted to make my mark. I want to try to make a difference and to be noted for making that difference. It means the world to me, truly. Pamela Johnson of Jersey City. After surviving a shooting more than 20 years ago, Pamela Johnson was compelled to take action to help other victims of violence. In 2014, she launched a grassroots anti-violence movement in Jersey City, which led to the creation of the Anti-Violence Coalition of Hudson County that provides trauma counseling and support for victims and families while also working on violence prevention and de-escalation in communities. When we started many years ago, this work wasn't looked at as a public health concern as it is right now. And we were one of the first groups to begin that conversation with our local health department. We wanted the work to be looked like any other disease and let's treat the root causes of that disease. So our uh, work is all around prevention. Um, we run a lot of programs and we intervene in conflict, but most of our work is done in prevention ways, you know, because we want to make sure that we're making an impact early on. Um, we also have a career building training program to provide an opportunity for individuals who may have engaged in violence in the past or who are at risk of engaging in violence could have an opportunity to get a skill, a trade, and then go get a job and turn that job into a career and then ha you know, have a sustainable way to assist your family. You know, as a gun violence survivor, I, I understand the need for this organization and for this wraparound system of care that we provide. But the system continues to re-victimize our victims because they can't get any assistance. And so we have to walk people through the process or they won't get someone to answer the phone or answer their email or respond to them when they're inquiring about services and resources. You know, when we hear a mom say like we saved their child, it continues to give me hope. And I'm very optimistic about life in general. We're talking courage, commitment, and a desire and a willingness a tenacity to make a difference in the lives of others, regardless of the tragedies that one faces. 
Now, this next group of honorees, there are two people. One, uh, someone I know very well, my hometown of Montclair, has used jazz, the arts, to inspire young people to find a piece of themselves, to express a piece of themselves. It, she's powerful. She's terrific. And she clearly deserves this award. This other young lady you're about to meet is actually a law student, a law student that looks to inspire and make a difference in the lives of other young people, younger than her, but not that much younger, because they people talk about our next generation of leaders. They're right there. They're right on the cusp. And these two leaders are making a big difference with young people. Melissa Walker of Montclair. A professional jazz vocalist, Melissa created Jazz House Kids in 2002 to use jazz, America's original musical art form, to ignite creativity and enhance students' academic and social-emotional skills. After-school and summer programs provide a supportive, creative community for students from diverse backgrounds from 10 New Jersey counties. In-school programs reach those in under-resourced schools in Newark and Patterson. A little over 20 years ago, I was asked by WBGO Radio in Newark to do a program for kids and their families. I decided that we would right then and there build a jazz house. And I asked our young kids to take, uh, go under their seat and pull out this virtual tool belt. And we began to fill this belt with all the tools that we needed, musical, but also just as being members of a community. You can't get engaged and involved if you don't have access. And so making sure young people have an access to an instrument, to great world-class education, to a program in their school, and help them then launch their lives in there on stage or off through our community building aspect of our program. And then take your gifts that you've now honed and you've worked at, and now invest in your community. And so for me, there's a lot of reward to see young people come through this process of the Jazz House and then play it forward, literally play it forward. And so many of them are still a part of the Jazz House. You can take your talents and your grit and hard work and you can put it towards moving a community, making that change. And that's what this award is about. And I share this award with so many people who have really invested in what we do and believe that this music can be an instrument for change. Zania Lewis of Edgewater Park started Yes She Can campaign to equip young people who are overcoming adversity with the tools and resources to succeed in college and in their careers. Her advocacy to end scholarship displacement led to legislation that prohibits the practice at New Jersey's public colleges and universities. I saw a lot of students were overcoming a lot of adversities on their journey to their educational goals um, and employment goals. And I saw that many of them didn't have those um, opportunities and resources or support system um, like I had. So I actually was a victim of scholarship award displacement. I won a large scholarship and I thought that that was gonna pay for my rest of my college. And come to find out it did not. My school said that actually outside scholarships harm you more than they help you. And so they cut my institutional scholarship by about half. They increased my federal loans and then they also eliminated my work study and I had to pay over $15,000 out of pocket and it gave me two choices whether to drop out of college or get a private loan but because of COVID um, our school shut down and they started to give refunds and so my balance was cleared. I actually interned with Senator Troy Singleton when I was in high school and so I called him and I told him about my experience and he said that he's going to try to figure out um, what he can do about it. He introduced the bill to dismantle the practice. And New Jersey is the second state to outlaw it, and now there's five states currently. If you see that there's an issue in the world, that you can actually go out there and you can change it. And you don't have to be too old or you don't have to be too young to do it. You can be any age, and it just starts off small. And I'm just excited to um, share this award with my organization because it's not just for me. Again, it's for everyone that I've been able to work with, but also been able to serve. Amazing uplifting, making a difference. Now, our final honorees. These are three honorees of the 11 who realized 
who realize in real time that some people are excluded. Some people don't feel that they have a safe place, a safe space in the world. Um, different, whatever the heck that means. But the reality is this. These are leaders. These are honorees who received the Rustberry Making a Difference Awards, who decided to create those safe places, those safe spaces to create more inclusion, to have people feel they're part of a community and they're really making a difference. Riley Howerton of Vineland. Diagnosed on the autism spectrum as a child, Riley overheard other children using an offensive word that experience resulted in her launching the Choose Wise Words campaign, which led to a book and speaking opportunities to thousands of people about kindness and inclusivity. Now a high school student, she uses sports and pageants as a platform to share her message. I've talked to adults and middle schoolers and high schools on Choose Wise Words, and I teach them that replacing the words that might offend people or you know hurt them based on something that you can't physically see on the outside i teach them to replace those words with words that won't hurt so for instance stupid instead of saying stupid you say wonky or silly words that won't hurt and over the years i found that it was very very difficult to educate little children that there are so many words that we use and that have been normalized over years that can hurt someone based off of their religion their their sexuality like their disability just in so many different aspects they could be getting hurt by the words we use some days personally i go and i go i see no progress i'm i'm not making any progress i don't see a difference in the world and then other days i realize that Fully grown adults have changed the way they've been speaking because they've met me. I'm very thankful for what this means to me as in an award for me getting recognized for the great things I do. I accept the recognition in hopes that my story will get out to someone to be able to educate them. Not for the fame or the glamour or the interviews, that this is strictly just a way for me to educate a bigger audience. I know that this is going to be a lifelong journey for me, and I know I'm going to continue to make a lot of progress. Robert Martin Seda Schreiber of Princeton has been at the forefront of intersectional social justice for decades, first as a school teacher for over 25 years, during which he forged the first gay-straight alliance in a New Jersey middle school, and now as founder and chief activist of the Bayard Rustin Center for Social Justice in Princeton, where he has created innovative, all-inclusive support programs and built a dedicated LGBTQIA safe space for queer youth, families, and our elders that is open every day with trained volunteers to welcome all with the care and respect they need and deserve. Five years ago, I founded the um, Bioresting Center for Social Justice. And by the way, these spaces that we create, they're not just for the folks that gather together in that space. They're for the folks that might see us gathering together, who may not be able to be there for whatever reason it may be. And when folks see, when kids, adults, and our seniors see that people are gathering together in this way, they are inspired and they feel the love even from afar. And I say now that my job itself is to put myself out of a job. I hope that there is a moment in time when I no longer have to do this work. But until that time, I will do it with all the passion and compassion that I can and I will bring as many friends and allies and chosen family along with me as I can. This is a tremendous honor, I am thrilled. And this is how we do it with style, hopefully. But these platforms, these awards, these honors, especially when it's given to a queer person like myself and when it is representing the queer community in and of itself, when we amplify a voice, whether it's individually or communally, it makes a tremendous amount of difference. 
Tia Ryans of Newark is the founder and executive director of Fort House, which stands for Forcing Out Recidivism Through Education. She also founded the Northern New Jersey chapter of the community activism organization, All of Us or None, and is co-author of Your Journey Beyond the Cell, a pre-release manual for people incarcerated in New Jersey. In 2022, Governor Phil Murphy appointed Tia as a trustee of the Edna Mayen Correctional Facility, making her the first formerly incarcerated person in that role. So the Fort House mission is to provide transitional housing for formerly incarcerated students pursuing post-secondary education. And that mission is directly linked to my personal experience. I had such a difficult time finding housing upon my release, which is a huge collateral consequence of incarceration. We had to create a housing model. And I asked all my other classmates, I was like, can we do this for real? Can we make this real more than just a project? And everyone was like, no. <laughs> It took me a few years, but I kept the core of what the original project stood for, made a few adjustments. So when you think about Fort House and its impact, even if we only had one location, it's scalable, but even if we had one location, the impact that we are gonna have is always gonna multiply tenfold, twentyfold, because each resident is inspired by what this house represents. There's always gonna be a way to shine light on something that seems impossible. So I would always say, just keep going. But I'm super honored to receive the Raspberry Award. My initial reaction is gonna be the same thing that I told the resident when I asked them to mop the floor. I don't really need a thank you because it's something that needed to be done. But I am so honored because it will shine light on something that is very important. Those final honorees of the Raspberry Making a Difference Awards, they're not just making a difference in their communities. What they're also doing is, as I said before, creating a safer space for others, a more inclusive space and place for others. They deserve to be recognized. And that's one of the reasons for these awards going all the way back to 1997. Now, think about this. 27 years. We thank Russ for starting this, our president of the foundation, Angelica, the vice president, Scott um, Berry, as well as the staff, the trustees, everyone. People will say it takes a village. It takes more than a village in this case to recognize all these people who have made such a difference over all these years. So just to remind you who our 11 honorees are in 2023, here they are again. Norma Bow, Highland Park. Robert Martin Seda Schreiber, Princeton. Jose German Gomez, Montclair. Zania Lewis, Edgewater Park. Carol DeVore, Flemington. Claudia Wheeler, East Brunswick. Riley Howerton, Vineland. Christian Kane, Toms River. Pamela Johnson, Jersey City. Melissa Walker, Montclair. Tia Ryans, Newark. It has been my honor, my pleasure. I say it every year, never meant it more than I mean it right now um, because we need it now more than ever. So think about it with everyone, not everyone, but a lot of people feeling polarized, divided, isolated, coming together like this, recognizing these 11 honorees, remembering all those who have been recognized over 27 years since 1997. It's a pretty great thing to do. So on behalf of everyone, at the Russ Berry Foundation, everyone making a difference. This is Steve Adubato. I cannot thank you enough for being with us. See you next time.